I got two years of college, took bubble hockey 101, so I should be okay. I'm probably a little rusty, it's been a few years, but um, yeah, what hockey player doesn't play bubble hockey? All right. Oh God, I'm already in trouble. You won an NCAA championship, yeah. three cups, and uh, World, uh, World Cup of Hockey, correct? Correct. What were some of your favorite memories from that? I mean, the World Cup, without a doubt, from playing for your, representing your country, no comparison to, you know, anything other, you know, we've never beat Canada in, you know, big tournaments, Olympics, up, you know, we got the silver medal, we got the, oh, big save. Um, but yeah, without a doubt, World Cup, and then obviously winning a Stanley Cup anywhere. Montreal is my first one, one, two in Detroit, but, you know, anybody will tell you, it doesn't matter what level you're at, just, you know, winning a championship, especially, whoa, one nothing. Do you count slop? Anyway, <laughs> um, yeah, you know, w winning a championship w is is amazing to share that with the city and all your teammates. So it's so. Correct me if I'm wrong, though. Fact or fiction? Winter Classic '09. You had a few beers. Uh yeah. That's not nothing to do with partying. I was being benched after the first shift of the game and trying to keep my sanity uh, sitting on the bench there at Wrigley Field in my hometown. So, you know, that was just one that. incident where I probably shouldn't have done it, but, you know, I was just really frustrated with the situation and, you know, no harm done. I didn't play another shift the rest of the game and we won and everybody went home happy. So you're part of, and you've referenced it now, the Malibu Mob. Yeah. Those guys put together a hockey team. Who are you trusting to coach? Oh, God, I guess I'd have to, my mentor was a guy named Don Wildman. He was a, when I met him, he was 60 and then, He's passed since, but he was the guy that kind of held everybody together, and he extended my career you know, 10 years by just training with the guy. That's awesome. And John C. McGinley's part of that group, yeah? Yep, yeah, I guess if I go down the road, it's McGinley, John, John Cusack, D.B. Sweeney, Tony Danza, John uh, McEnroe, um, Laird Hamilton, surfer. Sure. Uh, yeah, it was, it was fun, just a fun group of people, and our, all our kids grew up together out in the West Coast, so it was, it was great. Do you ever want to make a, a switch to acting at some point? No. Finally, <laughs> two one. Uh, no, no, I didn't like it. A um, lot of long hours sitting around waiting in a trailer, and that's I'm not built for that. How do you like guys who are of that breed? You know, like Patrick Marlowe is still doing it right now, and you know the great Gordy Howe. You, yeah. what's like a common attribute you'd say besides like staying healthy? Is there something that's like a secret to this, or it's just play and be? as great as you are for a long time. No, in my case, I believe it was because I didn't, I didn't have to uproot my family. You know, I, I was able to play my last 10 years in Detroit. And most of the time when guys retire, it's because, you know, they got to make that decision. Is it worth it to be away from your family? Nice shot from, uh, you know, at the end of your career, it's tough when you got kids. And, you know, you just, you know, I made that decision. It's better to be with my family than play 10, 12 minutes, you know, and live on my own. So I'm going to start hacking you if I have to here. <laughs> All right, go for it. Speaking of, you actually won a cup with somebody you feuded with early in your career, with Robitaille. Yep. How do you go from, you know, not liking someone so much and getting after it to just winning a cup with them and calling bygones bygones, you know? I just hated because he was such a natural goal scorer and it was my job to stop him. And um, a lot easier to go after guys like that than tough guys. So. Uh, he, like I said, it was hockey players, you've heard that saying, they get in a fight and then afterwards they see each other in the bar and they're having a beer together. So that's, that's kind of the mentality of the hockey players. Do you ever kind of look out on the ice and say like, I'm one of the greatest to ever do it? No, <laughs> I still can't believe I made the NHL. I'd like, like I said, back in the 80s, 70s, there was no kids out of Chicago, you know, making it to the NHL. If you made it to college, but you know, I wasn't playing because I, thought I was going to make the pros. I just, I just love playing and, you know, at one point it ended for me. It didn't bother me one bit. I was just going to go to school and get a business degree. But, you know, again, right place at the right time and it, it worked out really well for me and it, it was really lucky. My parents both born in Greece. I had no business playing hockey. I should have opened up a restaurant and just been happy. So, right. um, it worked out unreal. Do guys respect for you, does that respect change on the ice when you become sort of older in the league and you're playing longer, do guys tend to respect you a different way than when you're playing when you're younger? Yeah, almost to the point where it's embarrassing. You know, you, you hate to go hit young guys because they don't hit you. And um, But again, it, 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 it's, it's kind of nice, you know, the respect level of the kids showed me, but at some point, you know, you want to engage and compete, but, um, you know, it just felt guilty. 
All right, I won. I don't care. The game's got to be over. All right, well, <laughs> let's call it a win on that one. Chris, I guess good game. I'm not sure that's exactly how it was supposed it's to over. go. It's over. It's not popping up that's so I won our game. So. Thank you so much for the time, yeah, man. Yeah, you bet, John. That was, that, was, that was a lot of fun. All right.